Hello everyone, this is Josh, aka The Biscuit Eater, on the sixth and what is likely going to be the final episode this time, the real final episode, of my long-form let's play of Stories Untold. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this particular series, this is the last episode, so I would suggest that you actually check out the playlist in the description down below. Start from the beginning so you don't spoil yourself. And uh, as I've warned in my previous episodes, I believe I've done all of them, but uh, make sure that you're aware that there are flashes of light in this game that may cause epileptic seizures in those who are sensitive so do be careful now this particular game is a horror slash sci-fi slash mental thriller that has slowly turned into a story about a man who was involved in a fatal accident suffered traumatic head trauma and clearly believes himself to be at fault for what ensued but let's not get any further into it Instead, we'll go ahead and do the intro. All I need is me, myself, from that. Hey, hey. Sometimes I wish I was somebody else. I was somebody else. I got my own way. Don't care what you say. All right, folks, welcome back, and I hope you're ready to go, because let's go ahead and finish this particular story. Now, let's see. So, you, you're you never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys, ceiling to floor racks. A collector, although he does actually drink them too. There's a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. Let's read card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. With your whiskey in hand, you take it in the room about you. There must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds worth of drinking here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give the thumbs up to dad across the room. He nods and winks. Look around. Busy and noisy. We'll need to find somewhere quieter. Here. Go back out to the hallway. A few bumps and laughs on the way through and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your, you stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen, covered in blood. She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. I'm sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I am so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. You're standing in the hallway. Something has stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks you to drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. You'd love to call it a night, but Jen is waiting patiently. Oh, outside. 
No point. Do you find those car keys? Find keys. Look for keys. You need to look for them. It must be either in the kitchen or the living room. You're sure he's in the living room? The living room has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat in chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring a drink at the drinks cabinet. Look for keys. Find keys? Approach mom. Talk to mom. Tears immediately start to appear in her eyes. My son, off to America. She gives you a hug. Hug mom. Hug mom. Look at mom. He's totally in her element here. She always loved being the host. Find coat. Get. Get coat. Okay. Look at table. Drinks and coasters like proper civilized people. You can't see your keys. Look at chairs. Friends in conversation. Jackets and coats everywhere. Look in coats. Get coat. Get coat. You're standing in the back in the hallway, bottle of whiskey in hand, but no car keys. Ten points to the living room and size as she puts on her coat. Go to living room. Put on coat. Get coats. Search coats. Oh, this is driving me nuts. I mean, it would be in my coat pocket, I would assume, right? Look at jacket. Find coat. Find jacket. Keys in the kitchen. The kitchen is busy. Way too many people crammed in here, but I guess this is where the food and drink are at. The guests are like a set of vultures picking at the roast on the kitchen counter. Your dad is locking up the utility room. Look, table. Table is a mess. Party food mix. Unclaimed drinks. Used napkins. No keys, though. Drink whiskey. Take a little swig from the crazy expensive whiskey. Very classy. Enter living room. It's in here somewhere. Search cabinet. Most collection of wines and spirits. Definitely no keys in here. Search coat. Search jacket.
Nope. Keep going, you have to breathe. Keep going. Oh, we would say give up, a coward. That's different. Okay. <sighs> Sit down. Sit. Wait. Drink. You know, folks, I'll be right back. Sorry, I I want to figure this out, but I want to just kind of clear my head here. Sorry about that. I was just getting frustrated, folks, and so got up, walked around a little bit, coming back now. Uh, so, let's see. Look around. Why not? A coffee table. A drinks cabinet. One of the chairs is overflowing with jackets and coats. Look at coats. Did I not do that? You search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Our keys in the pocket. You grab a Did I not look at coats? Search coats. Thir Brah! Brah. Okay. <laughs> Put on coat. Wear coat. Back in. Okay. Leave. Keys in hand. You head back to the hall. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She has work in the morning and no one else is in any fit state of drive. You can handle it, though. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? Leave. You open the front door and walk out into the freezing night. Cold air hits you. You are glad you have your jacket with you. There's a dusting of snow around you as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house and the car sits at the front of the house. Enter car. You fumble with the car handle, confused, until Jen tells you to maybe use the key in your hand. Unlock car. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the car glove box and hands you a note and a key that was inside. She tells you that it's for when you return. Look at the note. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back and get to get power and lights on. Also found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy. The car is freezing. Both you and Jen have your seatbelts on and are ready to go. It's time to go. Turn key. Try to turn the ignition with the sheer willpower by holding keys in your hand. <laughs> Put key in car. It takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. Turn key. You turn the key in the ignition, and the car roars to life. Let's see. 86, so release, brake. Nope, okay. I was just thinking, you know, the safety brake or whatever. Drive car. The car squeals to stay stationary. Jen suggests releasing. Break, give me a white eye stick. Did I not just release? Break. You very hesitantly release the handbrake. See, I knew it was, it was the 80s, Dag Nebbit. Drive car, which you should never do when drunk. Put the car in gear and pull out into the driveway like a first time driver. You really shouldn't be driving. Oh shit, Sherlock. You, I am driving. Very drunk on the road towards the town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as the journey get, since the journey get, got going. It shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. Left. Go left. You don't want to, but you had better ask Jen for directions. Ask Jen. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. Go left. 
You turn the car left at the junction and accelerate off. Confident that you are at the right road, now you loosen up and put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. Slow down. That's not what really happened, though, is it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is sitting in your arm and yelling at you, crazy sister. Strange. There's a set of headlights coming directly at you. They're really slow, like slow motion. Swerve. You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. Lights merge with your car. The outside joins the inside. The whole James, world around you begins to scream. James, for pull over! James! It was at this very moment, wasn't it, James? The moment you lost it all. Your sister. Her parents. Yourself. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity, trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes spill into your car from the engines. You're in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Now we're the alien getting out of the... Getting out. I, you can't move. Your seatbelt is still in place. Unlatch. Seat. Belt. Take off. Belt. You release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over as you slump on the roof of your car. Get out. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall to your knees on the ground next to your, your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. A blue car has smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You're standing holding your whiskey and your dad's note. Flashing lights are approaching at a distance. can't just toss this away without thinking. They'll find it and they will come to you. Put bottle in other car. That's what we know we did. What good is pouring it out here to do what's going to do, James? You still have the bottle. Throw go to driver. Look at other car. Hazard lights are blinking and fumes are rising from the engine. Through the smashed windows, you can see the motionless driver. Give bottle to driver. Look around. A crash site. Smoke bills from the crash cars to the sky above. Exterior lights flicking on and off. Hide bottle. Well, that's not smart thinking, James, is it? They'll eventually find it and we'll link it to you. Hide bottle in other car. Give bottle to driver. body is slumped and his face is bloody. Or whiskey on driver. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the 
girl of their assignment. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bo bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then very deliberately spill the remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver, and you toss incriminating evidence into his passenger seat. A circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people, all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, as she, and she walks towards you. As you approach the man, the pulsating lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in your head increases. You fall to the ground at his feet. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident. That poor man. Me. You have to remember. It was all your fault. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and wrecked all of our lives. And you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Say it, James. Say it. Tell them. Listen to yourself. Oh man. It's getting really heavy now. It has to end, James. Do you not understand? This episode you're having must come to an end. Doctor, I'm, I'm just always watching remotely. I don't know if anyone else is ever with remember. You. Stop the session, Mr. Asian. Go back to where we started. Sometimes they make you watch your first session to see what really happened. Put an end to this nightmare. I want to! It's all my fault, that's what you want we to We can't do this, James. We can't let go. It feels like an emergency. Okay, I don't know what else to click. Oh. Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect they'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on, let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow.
Wow. Well, that was actually a pretty good game. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was rather fun. It had some slightly scary moments at the first, but wasn't really the horror game I was expecting. But uh, pretty connected, and I, the, the 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 bits and pieces actually made sense. You can actually see the connection and the the parallels between each of the uh, what was happening in the real world and what was happening in the main character's mind. And I like that. That was actually a very enjoyable game. So kudos to the developers. So no complaints. Uh, other than I mean, there was a couple. Moments where I was just frustrated because I couldn't move on. And I wonder if I missed anything. But otherwise, no. That was a pretty good bit of game. So we're going to go ahead and end this up there. As always, folks, if you like what I'm doing, please be, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. I'll also make sure that you click that notification bell so you can get notifications whenever a new video goes live. Also, if you'd like to get other, get notifications elsewhere, I also have regular updates on my Twitter channel at BiscuitEaterYT or on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash The Biscuit Eater. One word. But as always, as long as you guys had fun, I know I had fun. And until we meet again, game on, lovelies. <laughs>